What up? Welcome to another episode, the 35th episode of the Back of the Class. Juan, number 35, bro. The obvious one is Kevin Durant, but I'm going to go with Clarence Witherspoon. Oh, wow. One of your old school Sixers. I hate that guy. Why? Because when we traded uh, Barkley to the Suns, oh, we drafted know, him and they said that oh. he was the next Charles Barkley. Aha! Yeah. Oh, my God. I'll never forget. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but going to baseball, <laughs> Frank Thomas, big hurt, 35. Oh, the big hurt, man. That was a good one, man. But yeah. All right. Well. Hi, guys. This is a, a very uh, momentous number 30 fizzle. For Zach, Shizzle. Zach has made his triumphant return. Yes, thank God. Guys. He's back. Yes, very anyway, happy. I am the Esteban Serrano. I'm Juan. I'm still Zach. And we are at the Back of the Class podcast. We have some dope things to talk about this week. A lot of visuals. It's going to be a very visual podcast. Right. Audio vision, if you will. Uh, Drake's short film, Please Forgive Me, is out. Didn't feel short. Um, it definitely didn't feel short. <laughs> sure as fuck didn't feel short. It was a great imagery. Um, the weekend Ooh. dropped his video for Starboy, which is probably the worst title I've ever heard in my life. But a great video. But a great video and a good song. And we'll talk about and that. And I appreciate the length. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it was music video length. Mm-hmm. And um, I have an interview with Busy Crook. Busy dropped by and talked about a part of everything, his new project. Um, so we'll roll that in as well. And of course, we'll do whatever happened to, and we'll also talk about our weekend playlist. Now, Mm -hmm. if you discovered us by chance, congratulations, congrats (laughs) at this point, you should subscribe Mm -hmm. because the next 20 to 30 minutes is going to be well worth your while. And you're going to want to hear this early Thursday. Yeah. And if you like that interview, I mean, and you're new. Go back. We got RZA. We got Carrie Foe, Kamal yeah. Bell, Joey Badass, Joey yeah. Badass, Head from Corn. That was a dope one. So, all right, cool. So let's get right into this. Drizzy Drake. This is Drake Citizen Kane. We just pushed <laughs> Escape. We don't just you dare <laughs> say Drake and Citizen Kane in the same Citizen Drake. Oh come we on! We just man. pushed escape uh, gladly on this video. Um, yeah, man. I mean, uh, come on, not the not the worst thing I've ever seen. But. So let's let's just see. See, this is the here's here's the thing, right? Ever since I want to say it was the streets is watching. Mm-hmm. Was that the first inaugural like music video flow into a storyline like straight to DVD. Streets is watching Jay Z, Streets is uh, watching. The film. Okay. I'm sorry, my bad. I always think when you said that, I automatically thought locks, but their shit was We Are the Streets. We are the streets. No. So yeah, Jay Z back in the nineties dropped um a straight to DVD movie that threaded a storyline between multiple music videos. Mm-hmm. And it was really well done. Storyline was actually really good. We didn't really expect much from the acting. He actually made it comedic because there's a scene that opens up with like this ill shootout. He's like, all those shots, nobody hit. <laughs> like it was a funny moment. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nice. But ever since then, I feel like people have tried to recreate that, you know, storytelling ability mm-hmm. through. You know, the art of like weaving music videos out with. I feel like in the 90s, people did a lot. It's like to be continued in and then the next music video. I I feel like Diddy probably did it a couple of times. Puffy did it a lot. He had a lot of theatrical music videos. But like, here's the thing, right? Drake is the biggest star on the planet right now, number one. Number two, we know his background. He's an actor first. Then he transitioned to a rapper, Wheelchair Mm -hmm. Jimmy. We all know that. So the bar, in my opinion, was set way higher for Drake because. You have acting abilities, yeah. acting chops, and you're the biggest star on the planet Earth. So at the end of the thing, I noticed that it said starring Drake. It wasn't starring Aubrey Graham, who's actually the actor. It was starring Drake, who's not an actor. Mm. Good point. Yeah, yeah. I, I was wondering why is it so easy to forget he was an actor? Well, it probably like makes like, more sense to put Drake when it's his music being played throughout the whole thing and not Aubrey's. Because he's Drake. But now. I get what that's what I'm saying because he did, when he was an actor, when he started out as an actor, he was Aubrey Graham, you know? Right. And, and he hasn't really acted since he's become 
a massive hip hop star, so yeah. maybe he doesn't really. Maybe he's not just like SNL doing it anymore. No, nah, that's not yeah. true. You're right because SNL he killed it. The yeah. last video he did with Tyra Banks, I thought was great. Yeah. Wasn't he in Anchorman too? He was in Anchorman. Yep. I thought then when he, he he was sitting and having like a three minute conversation with Tyra Banks, I thought it, I didn't think it was good. But it was, it was was it not better than this, acting wise? It was better. Yeah. Yeah. Can we just get into it? This whole starting out in District Nine favela in <laughs> South Africa, because like the story is just so weird. Right. Yeah, he meets man. the girl, then she's like, "Oh, got this proposition from this dude who wants to sleep with me for a million dollars. Should I do it?" I mean, right off the bat, the first thing a girl tells you after you take her home after a dance is right. that. And he's like, yeah, do it. Yeah, he doesn't but even let's hesitate. Make out now. It's not like the usual, like, well, let's weigh the pros and cons here. Right. It's just like, yeah, why don't you just do that shit? Right. Yeah. And, and then there was a loose narrative from there, but it was just like, just, yeah. just, just put these music videos together, man. I don't know. Like, I get it. The Please Forgive Me shit is just like, he told her to do it, and in the end, she's the one... You know, who got clipped for it mm -hmm. and he reaped the benefits because I'm assuming he kept the money since he put obviously everyone's seen this shit that because we're spoiling the crap out of it. <laughs> hey, ah, it's, ah, ah. come on. But if you yeah. put the bomb in the briefcase and she's the one that died, I get it. Please forgive me. But right. you didn't have to do 25 minutes to do, tell that story. I'm sorry. Yeah. And it I, looked cool. The I liked was these, dope. Though. Yeah. It was very well shot. And I would just say that let's get into, you know, some of the other nerd aspects of it. It was very, very well shot. Yeah. It was almost overcasted in terms of like just the random extras didn't need to be so extra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, the girl was hot. I felt like the <laughs> villains, or if you want to call them that, were great. The the top shata, that the the the, the patois rude boy. Oh, his his he, number his number his, two. Yeah, his right hand man, yeah. goon hand man. Like they needed subtitles. I didn't understand what the hell was going on half the time because I mean I speak that talk, see, and I don't mm -hmm. understand what the hell you just said. Like I don't get you it. You think so. Drake understands? Oh yeah, he does because he's a top shot of rude boy, so he understands <laughs> that shit. But I don't get it. Like right, but and I don't like it. Was cringeworthy to me is I don't want to see Drake make out ever. <laughs> I don't. I don't yeah, want to watch him make out. I don't need, I don't need to out. see him staring into the distance with his eyebrows lowered, like he's gonna. See that. Like, he's so emotional. Yeah. Like, I don't... We get that enough in your music. Yeah. And I don't remember... Like, I, I remember Scarface. I remember, you know, New Jack City. I remember certain gangster flicks that there was a love interest, but it never... He, the, the, the goon or the, the, the bad guy who you were rooting for, and it never felt like a punk because he was in love. He mm -hmm. felt like a gangster. Like they were an, yeah, they were, it was more anger that you fucked with my money, yeah. messed with my girl or my wife or my hood. Right. It wasn't just let me step on this porch and just stare into the sunset holding my face because <sighs> it's gone. You know, that kind of thing. Like, but, but that's his audience. Yeah. And that's what his audience, i.e. meaning the women mm -hmm. who love him and love his music, who's that, predominantly his. There's always a lot audience, of story. They're the ones who like that part about him. So, as always, it makes sense that he's playing to his audience, which is the smart thing to do. Now, question for all of you audience members out there who are women, who are Drake fans. If you are a damsel in distress in one of these really not realistic situations, do you really want Drake to be the one to come save you? Like, let's be real. What do you think your chances are of getting out of there alive? This chick had no chance <laughs> in hell, obviously. No. She was by herself in the whip. Well, the she thing got, with Drake uh, is he's got the resources, man. Like, Drake could have an army yeah, in but an Drake hour if he wanted. But he's so emo, he would personally come save you and you would be dead. I feel like Drake would, like... Tell the person that kidnapped you or has you held hostage that he'll play their daughter's birthday party if you let his girl go. <laughs> Please, man, just let her go, man. I'll, I'll, I'll sign some CDs. Oh, man. I'll play your daughter's prom, oh whatever you God. want. I'm trying to look what this guy who made this, um, Anthony Mandler, also made. He's made videos for, like, everybody. He made Run This Town. Oh, nice. Uh, that made, makes sense because there's similarities in those videos with a lot of fire. He made Live Your yeah, Life. It was great. The production value, there was no expense spared. Mm -hmm. It was great looking. He did like all of Jay's Blueprint 3 videos. He did Death of Autotune. He did Young Forever. So this guy's got, 
He was good, yeah. I, I liked, so if, if you didn't watch it and you're just curious, like, it does basically have the music video for, it has the music video for One Dance. Uh, and another thing about that, I didn't like the entirety of the music videos. I didn't need them in their entirety. I got the vibe, to, and I didn't want to see the whole thing. I wanted to see more movie. I would have watched more music video. That was my favorite part. I liked the, the controller one, like, out in the desert. Hype was, like, 30 seconds. That should have been longer. Right. Um, there's it's, so, there, it's so weird. Like, <laughs> what? They, cause like, you know, in the narrative of the story, he wants to tell that they, they met, they really like each other. And then the way they spent time and got closer was when she walked his cheetah in the desert while he watched <laughs> yeah. from afar. Like, it's like, I, yeah. I get it. This is a music video. Like, you know, I understand it's fantasy, but, but it's not. It's, it's so ridiculous when you think about it. You know what right. I mean? Like, yeah. Like, hey, babe, can you go walk the cheetah? Yeah. It seems like he's going to keep keep trying it until he gets it because like he did hold on we're going home he tried to make right. a little seven minute gangster movie so we'll see all right so to wrap this up real quickly right who is the best rap movie music video maker in your opinion kanye come on like runaway that's it is so good. Yeah. Or Mercy. They're more intriguing, too. Like, yeah. Flashing Lights is super, like, intriguing. Yeah. And he's done so many styles. Drake, the range of Drake music videos is, like, very yeah. small. But it's also, like, for example, this Drake one is just, it's just telling, as ridiculous as the story is, he's just telling uh, just whatever, a story. Mm -hmm. With Kanye shit, you're just like, why is he in a trunk? Why? Yeah. Why, like, you know, but he takes more risks, and he does stuff that you're like, oh, that's cool. Like, the... All, com with all comes down video when you don't see his face it's POV the whole mm -hmm. video until he goes into the bathroom that's cool like that's that was fun mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and like shit like he that he always is like pushing it's, yeah pushing. it's pushing it's intriguing it's thought provoking it's yeah. stimulating you know this one is just shot really well it's everything's done professionally very mm -hmm. well done but it's like it's just a regular high budget music video yeah you know, there's no risks being taken besides, you know, trying to make Drake look hard, which is a challenge in and of itself. Yeah, good luck. Anyway, my favorite is the is Streets is Watching. I don't think there's been a better attempt at a movie threaded through music videos. I agree, Kanye Runaway was a good visual. Alien, yeah. Phoenix, Drop It, like all of that, I get it. It was visually beautiful with the whole Chanel, like the, the, the ballet scene and all that stuff. It was cool. It was abstract creative, whatever. I hate all Kanye West music videos. Oh, I think they're no. terrible. That's fair. All of them are terrible. Wow. Honorable mention, R. Kelly. What there about Mercy? With the, have you seen that one? It's like a one take in a parking garage. Oh, yeah, so and I, hate, I hate one take for the sake of like, let's be cool and do a one take. Like, fuck it. And there is and not a... And reality is not one take. Yeah, I'm about to say that because even the one that you mentioned, um, Flashing down. Lights, is oh, yeah. not one take. There's, yeah. two, there's two edits in that video. And... Damn I get it, it. The one chick with the big nose that looks like Toucan Sam, um, <laughs> who's got a nice booty. I get that she's walking and you see her in slow mo and her fur in lingerie, which makes no sense. If it's cold enough for a fur, why aren't you wearing clothes? But anyway, that that's beside the point. All right. Yeah, Maybe but R. Kelly is on. definitely up there. Oh, Moder absolutely. with the download. But he's not a rapper. Contagious. But, yeah. What was the one between downloading? I think Contagious followed up download. Download. Right. right? Down I don't know. Oh, what Kendrick, obviously, too, too man. And Schoolboy Q. Those guys are so good. Schoolboy shit was yeah. dope. Yeah. Because that was no, more... Right. Yeah, Schoolboy yeah. shit was dope because it was Schoolboy. gritty and it was real. Mm -hmm. right. And you believed it coming from him. Right. With Drake, you're watching yeah. Drake play a role in this mm -hmm. mini movie. No, I love every Kendrick video, though. And Run the Jewels makes good ones, too. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. All right, well, let's keep it in the six, but move this podcast along a little bit and talk yep. about The Weeknd. Mm-hmm. He dropped his video for Starboy. What are your thoughts? It was good. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was cool. Do we like the metaphor of him killing his old self and becoming... The thing is, he did that in like the last video, oh, in wow. The Hills. It's like him killing oh, yeah. himself. Right. And I'm pretty sure he got like a plastic bag over the head, too. Whatever, I don't care about the repetition, because there's, like, there's always somebody dying. There's always like 
tension in his videos. Right, right, Like, right. the ones from Beauty Behind the Madness, there was, like, it was, like, a trilogy sort of mm-hmm. thing. He loves um, trilogies. So, yeah, I'm, I'm into it. Like, this song has been around for a week, and it's been, I've been, like, I, I think I really like this song. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know nice. if it's I want to, yeah. I don't know good. if I want to quite cave yet, but, uh, <laughs> and now this, this, he did it well, like, putting the video right out, and yeah, the right. video's going to seal the deal. I yeah, think. there's definitely stuff in New that stand out, like, the Panther Mm-hmm. I knew you were going to say in that. The, Yo, in the, the passenger seat, Juan dope. has a running thread of un- enjoying animals in but hip-hop. I love jungle cats. I wonder if that was inspired by, like, you guys seen Talladega Nights, right? Where, like, he has to drive with the, mm-hmm. what is it, the mountain lion in oh, the car was, with him? Yeah, That's man. the first thing I thought about. Like, oh, he's just driving with a panther. In his oh, seat. I haven't thought and about that. And my man ain't even flinching. See, I thought it was inspired <laughs> by the Jungle Book movie. I that am. was so dope. Yeah, that came out. That panther. Maybe oh. it was the same panther. Same CGI panther. Maybe. Oh, it's possible. But he didn't talk, so maybe not. <laughs> no. What about, if he would have talked, it would have ruined the whole thing. What about this was made by Daft Punk, and they showed like this classical portrait yeah. of, of the robots at the beginning? Really? Yeah. yeah, it was great. They would, what, they produced a song? Yeah. yeah. Did they direct the video? No. I don't think okay. so. No. But um, him smashing everything was like part of him cleansing his former self, like... Because he was, guess. like, wrecking his plaques and, like, all his achievements that were on the wall right. with the lightsaber from mm-hmm. Kylo Ren. From it was, like, the but reverse it lightsaber. It was, a, it, was the, it was the Jesus lightsaber. Yeah, it's like a cross. When, yeah, he when, flipped it. Well, at that point, it's a, either a hammer or a fucking axe. It's not a sword anymore, so you're right. It's right. a, it's a star that. boy sword, But man. he's also holding it from the, the actual glowing yeah, he, laser. Yeah, right. There's so. no handle. <sighs> Terrible. I think, which I think, makes me think it's not a real lightsaber. It's just some freaky glow. It's just a giant glow stick? Cross. I think it, the weekend's music videos are the only place he can look like a badass. He wasn't like, looking he gets on look very bad. When he's sitting on that bed. Well, when he's smashing stuff and he's like running stuff, people are intimidated by him, uh, whatever. See, this is my thing, right? So when the first chord hits, it sounds like. Thriller, uh-huh. right? It and sounds then, like Clockwork Orange to me. When he's walking down the hallway, he does he's doing yeah. a lot of head move like uh-huh. Michael Jackson uh-huh. vibes. I remember no matter how gangster the moment was in those intense Michael Jackson music videos, you never thought MJ was nope. a badass. Even in Beat It, like they you know not the even gang war. Not even mm-hmm. in the word that that the song <laughs> that the word of the name of the song is bad. Right. He did not, not look bad. intimidating. Well whatsoever. he just as a person like reminds me of what Michael was like out in public too. Right. Like the Which, way he speaks, obviously, right. the way he kind of carries himself. He's not a gang. He's not but like I'm not saying at the and level he's, of and Michael. Like, he's but, singing no. high pitch the whole time. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to correlate high pitch singing to I'm a badass who has this Christian lightsaber and I'm <laughs> smashing up an entire apartment. The Christ saber. The Christ saber. Yeah. Christ saber. Um, do I need a Christ saber so bad. I don't know what I was going to say. I liked when he was doing like carpool karaoke with himself to the to yes. those. Dot, dot. <laughs> that no, cool. I mean, look, all in all, I think it was a, an amazing video, especially nowadays where we're not seeing very many videos that are of this level, this caliber. People actually spending money on production value and, mm-hmm. and effects and stuff like that. I felt like the video was great, and then the, we saw the Panther, and it was great. It was amazing mm-hmm. after that. Like, and I just uh, liked when there was a, a little black cat, too. I was right. into that. Oh. There was a cat on the bed. I don't really like cats. You love cats. What do you, yeah, love man. What, Panthers. What do you guys think of his haircut? Did I he, liked does it. he need the signature hair? Is you he going to be okay no, without like, it? Now he looks like just any other dude. Right. I don't think so. He's the weekend now. You know, everyone knows. I mean, that that, I that weird Smurf dread thing that was on the top. <laughs> Why is it Smurf? Looked like dirty it, it, Smurf. It looked over like Smurf. It was okay. terrible. I thought it was terrible. One dread. I need a one dread. What the hell? You got <laughs> one big ass shark fin. Dread so you think it's a good head. move to cut it? Yeah, cut yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it freshens it up. Like he reinvents. Like and if you go kill yourself, like, three it's times, just a refresher. It's good. It's way. good. It's a, I, I'm always a fan of people just like doing something different. Right. Yeah. So. But if he doesn't like it and he changes it again, all of a sudden he's going to be like Justin Bieber where like every haircut is a moment <laughs> and oh. people are tracking it. But Fuck. that's if he doesn't. I think he's owning this one. It looks good. Like B- Bieber had some like, eh, and then we go, we go in there? Okay, we'll go there. Like, you know, this, this one looks like it's going to stick. Yeah. I bet he feels so good to not have that same hair anymore, though. Right. To have a change. Now, how do we feel about him in general? In general, the weekend. I don't. I mean, he makes hit songs, and I like him and all, but I'm not like checking for him. 
Right. Did you listen to his album or any mixtapes? His new one? Mm-hmm. No. No. His last one, I heard a couple of times. It was good. You know, it wasn't like, oh, man, I got to right. keep this in rotation. Yeah. Right. This song is a hit. Like, you could, it's a fucking hit. Yeah. From production to the vocals. Absolutely. It's a hit. I haven't heard the rest of the album. I don't check for his mixtapes. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I just know, like, I've heard different weird things about him, like, about his history, that, like, kind of dark and weird, that yeah. I was just like, mm-hmm. huh. That's <laughs> right. peculiar. Right. What's your story with the weekend? Um, in the beginning, and by beginning I mean like 2010, 12, late 2010. Yeah. No, I was I was kind of early on him. Um, I liked it. I really, really liked it. Kind of obsessed. I love the visuals. The first maybe three or four videos he dropped was just these smoking hot women that he wasn't even in the video, mm-hmm. and it it matched because the songs were straight up like sex in the form of audio. Mm-hmm. And um, I really liked it. It was mysterious. You didn't know who he was. He was making this great music. Um, I got laid to it a lot. It, was, <laughs> it worked w- worked out for me really well. But then the world got it. And I feel like with everyone else, you know, him, him becoming bigger, the stage kind of got bigger, and it kind of made him broaden his music a lot. And then at that point, I really kind of fell out of love. Like, I don't really... I don't not like him. Mm-hmm. I like The Weeknd. When the music comes out, I'm definitely listening to it. It ain't Frank Ocean level of, like, I need to hear it. It's mm-hmm. more like, oh, man, I'm, you know, I want to check for it. Um, and then also my wife found it after I played it for her, you know, really early. And now she's kind of on it more than I am. So mm-hmm. it so you heard the, the album, The Beauty Behind the Mask? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, heard yeah. it like a decent amount? Yeah. yeah. I can't imagine having been in since the mixtapes and hearing, like, Can't Feel My Face and just being like, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I didn't, I, when those mixtapes were coming out, it, something about the buzz just, like, rubbed me the wrong way. And really? I, when I tried them out, I was just like, this isn't for House me. House of Balloons, man, was amazing. When I go back now and listen, yeah, it is good. And I'm glad I can listen, like, apart from the hype. This? But it was basically, like, last summer was like a month of intense weekend deep right, dive right, and I right, listened right. to that album a lot and I do think it's good but yeah, then right. I saw him at Made in America at the end of that kind of weekend spree and I was like alright this is like <laughs> I kind of closed the book there right um, I was like this is yeah this is enough weekend yeah so I'll, right. I'll definitely check out new album there's a lot of good songs on the last one that didn't become singles. And what's up with Starboy? Yes thank you for bringing that back there's to only life. one star child and okay. he's from Kiss Oh, it makes me think of Star Girl. It's a children's book. But he's a star boy. Like you, like let's say, lyrically, Zach and I agree. Lyrically, there's some great bars in this record. Mm-hmm. He's his pen is 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 tremendous. However, you can't be talking about people want to kill me. I'm a star boy, and they're like, whoa, you just ruined the whole. And then thing. you just drop like, the n word in there in high pitch. Yeah. It just does not. It, it just does fit. not fit. Star boy. Yeah. I could have did without this. Just the word star boy. If he would have said, I'm a star. It's so catchy, though. It's so catchy. You can't so have catchy. the words, was, oh, you can't so have the words nigga and star boy in the same <laughs> song, let alone in the same, right. like, 16. The same room. No, it's just yeah. It's just weird. Yeah, it's I mean, you can do what you're doing, bro. You're successful as yeah, shit. You, yeah, That's exactly. just my two cents, but. Anyway, let's get into uh, this busy crook interview. I had the man drop by this very office and talk about his new project and kind of dive in a little bit about, you know, his background. So check it out. We're here to talk about this tape. Part of everything. A part of everything. But before we go there... This tape is going to be, you know, exclusively title for a while. Yeah, yeah. Title gets everything first. Title gets family. everything first. Now, yeah. you're the first artist to walk through these doors that has, like, kind of an ongoing relationship with title. So just talk about that. How did title get involved with you? How did you get involved with them? How, you know, how do you feel? Right. You know, this is like a whole new world right, we're getting right, into right. with the streaming right. stuff. Man, title, um, title reached out to me last year. They reached out to me last year and they told us about this discovery program that they were doing. Um, they brought me out to LA and um, and we chopped it up and um, you know they just believed in the music. They believed in the music and uh, part of the discovery program is finding artists, is discovering artists. Right. Know? So um, which is lost. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Like titles doing what the labels are supposed to be doing. What they supposed to be doing. Right. Yeah. So um so it was just a it was building a relationship and then they had me do Made in America. And then um yeah, man, shout out to everybody in that building, Jason right. Capanna, Tim. Tell us about your background. I know you lived in Egypt yeah. for a while. Like yeah. what the heck? Like I was born to Hispanic parents. My father's Cuban, my mother's Dominican. Do you speak Spanish? No, I speak Spanish fluently, yeah. yeah. Jealous. I'm Puerto Rican, bro. I'm oh, yeah. I'm sorta Rican. Well, Puerto Ricans never speak Spanish. Exactly. Though. That's weird. So I can't be really mad, but like at the same time, I'm really mad. So right. I'm, glad, I'm glad you speak Spanish. Anyway, right. go ahead. I lived in Egypt. My father worked with the royal family. He was like wow. the, he was like their head like bodyguard. Wow. Yeah, my dad told me a lot of stories. My dad was a wild boy. Yeah, my father actually got me my first record deal. So the people that, the family he worked with, they had relatives in Miami that started a record label called Royal Dollar. And I would always send them my music since I was literally 13. And when I was like 17, it was like, God, this sounded like something. It brought wow. me under the wing. And yeah, that, that right there is like why I'm even here. Like that led to something else, that led to something else. So without my dad, I wouldn't even be here. Wow. Yeah. Tell me about this project now. So when did you start working on it? Has it been Man, a year? I started a part of everything right after Made in America. Okay. So what has been, Monty, like a year and a it's half? It's been a year because I'm here. I just had a meeting in this room. Well, it was a little before, even before that. So like a year and a half. Okay. Man, I've worked with, I've scratched the project so many times because it was supposed to come out the month after Made in America. Everybody right. was like, yo. You just right. didn't made in America. You have to drop. Drop something, right. And I had it together, but something my something my gut just told me, nah, this is not it. And, um, man, I done worked with so many producers. We had Fallen Out, had to scratch everything. And, um, yeah, man, and it just, now we have a, a product. Word. I think I heard six. Yeah, I played you like six Holy joints. cow, Appreciate man. it, man. I appreciate that. Six joints. And not one was the same. Yet the project is not not a, a, a concept, but like it's very well flushed out and very well thought out. So for it Appreciate to it. not sound the same yet still fit with under this, right. you know, the vision that you have for the project is amazing. The music is amazing. So just talk about the project. Appreciate it. And the final, you know, version that you're you're going to release. Right. You know what? How did you land on this? this right. concept and this um, vision for the project? Well, it's called a part of everything. A part of everything means everything connects. Like, you know, me and you linked because of AJ. Me right. and AJ linked because of, you know, something else. Me and him linked because of something else. So right. it's a part of everything. Everything connects. Like, everybody's connected. And um, a part of everything, the whole inspiration came from the book, The Alchemist. Right. Um, now, for those that haven't read The Alchemist, it's recommended that you read it. It's like the best book. I hated reading until I read that book. Wow. And then I just went and found books similar like it because it's a life-changing book. It's right. something that relates to everybody. You know, it's about a boy that goes on a journey to find gold, but the gold is a metaphor for whatever your dream is. Everybody has their own treasure and gold out there. So um, along the journey, you know, the boy goes through so many ups and downs but learns so many lessons that got him, that he had to go through to get to the gold. And I think that's something that everybody deals with, you know? Right, the everybody, process. Yeah, exactly. Everybody has that dream. It's either you want to go for it and, you know, and risk it and take the risk of getting lost and go for it, or, you know, you don't go for it and then you live with regret and what ifs. And um, that's, what, that's, that's what the inspiration I took from it. And um, just told the stories over the last year and a half of my journey. How how are you envisioning you know this project rolling out? It seems like you're very calculated and and very you know strategic with how you release music when you release right, music. You right. definitely have to feel and the energy. Do you have like you uh you know the year planned out in your mind? Like I'm gonna drop this and then this is gonna happen. Like, right. Yeah. Um. I worked hard on this enough. Me and my team worked hard on on this enough that this is gonna be the project that breaks the door down for me. And mm -hmm. um, I think the people are gonna enjoy it. You know, I, I went even more in depth with my story and stuff that I never spoke about. Like, um, you know, I love my father. We have a very good relationship now, but growing up, like we wasn't, we weren't too close. You know, my father, uh, my father was, was very angry. So 
I got a record called Broken Homes where I speak on, you know, growing up in my house. Mm-hmm. And it's something that everybody deals with and nobody really talks about. Right. And I got another record called Pick On Me, which is, you know, it talks about it talks about bullying. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like I just I just seen an article that broke my heart about a kid in Staten Island today just came out in Staten Island, thirteen years old, killed himself because of bullying. Right. And you know, it's just that stuff is tough, man. I, I mean, I have three sons, right. so I'm very familiar with that right. with that feeling. Right. And what's ill is that I communicate with them through right. music. Right. So when I heard that record, it made me want to share it with them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's a theme that I kind of noticed with your music was like your very personal stories or something that I feel like everyone going through something is going to gravitate toward. Right, right. And they'll be able to, it'll be able to, to, to kind of help them cope, right. help them deal, help them like kind of digest what they're experiencing, be it a breakup, right. which you speak about, right. be it, you know, the, the, the situation at home, be it bullying, right. you know, these different v- energy, and especially like, these are topics, like you said, no one's really talking about broken home because no one wants to talk about right, that. Exactly. Those are things that aren't sexy for hip hop, right, especially right. It's for not us. Fly. It's not at yeah, all. You right. know what I'm saying? So like that's that's even you know that was something that really stuck out to me about your music was like I know people are going to gravitate toward this because it's not being offered and it's not even being offered, you know, at this dope of a level as well like are you is it are you consciously like aware that you know you may be speaking for people the thing with me is that um i came to the realization that everybody goes through the same thing at one point or another Mm -hmm. you know whether some people are just better at hiding it than others you know but everybody has had the same fears and the same insecurities at one point or another so knowing that i have no problem going digging in my deepest insecurities and fears and expressing it because him over there, he might want to play cool and act all, all, you know, but him over there, he might need to hear that because you don't know what he's going through. That could help him. Like when I was in my darkest phase, there were certain songs that kept me going because it was like, okay, I'm not the only one going through this right. and this person made it here so exactly. I can get through it. That's what I do it for. A record that kind of stuck out like a sore thumb for a lot of reasons, was the record with Lloyd. Lloyd, if you only knew. Shout out to Young Goldie. Yo, come on, man. That that record right there captured an energy that like I haven't felt in the present day if I wasn't playing something that came out. Man, thank you, man. In the '80s, you thank know what you. I'm saying? Thank like, so just talk about that record. Like, how did you link with Lloyd? How did the you know what part of the process was right. he involved? When that beat came on, what right. made you think? You know what I'm saying? Right. Conceptually, all of that. Man, that record took almost a year to complete. Wow. Um, yeah, the minute I got the beat, I got the beat from my man Zell from Toronto. He's part of the Maven, Maven Boys, one of the dopest producers I ever met. Um, as soon as I got that beat, I knew this was gonna be the one. Mm. So I just sat with it. I just sat with it till my emotion matched that beat. Uh. And um. You know, I, I'd write a couple bars every day. Like, I, I don't force it, you know? Okay. I'd write a couple bars every day and, 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 until it's completed. It was, it was completed over time. And then, um, man, Lloyd heard the record, and he loved it. He loved it. Wow. Yeah. Lloyd was like, man, he's like, not for nothing, man. Don't take this the wrong way, but I hope you never find a good girl, man, because <laughs> he's like, you you made the best music when you hurt, man. Wow. And, and I agree, man, like. That's another reason why the project took so long, cause it's like I need I need pain, I need hurt, need I need stuff experience. going on, so I can, exactly I need stuff going on, so I can talk about it. I can't just wake up and say yeah, woke up, made a band, hopped in the land, popped his hand. Right. I can't I can't do that. But you did, and that was kind of <laughs> dope. <but> just... <laughs> that was Busy Crook, a part of everything is out right. Now, make sure you check it out. Now, let's get into one of our favorite. Our new favorite segments. Yeah. Whatever happened to. Do you have one, Zach? I do have one. Yes. Um, it's, you guys have only done hip hop so far, but I got to ask. First of all, 
Do you guys know the name Rick Moranis? Of, of course. course. Okay, all right, good. So he hasn't faded that much. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, pop, he pops up here and there to do yeah. like written articles. And Set stuff. it up for the folks at home. Well, yeah, know. I mean, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Um, I think he did the uh, like second city. That he did either did some Chicago Wasn't he or yeah, the Giants too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was like, uh, yeah, he was one of the Chicago like uh, comedian slash actor improvists that came out of. And then city. his uh, his wife. Died in the early '90s, and then I and uh, he had like uh, several children, uh-huh. and he just I think the last movie he made was like '96, and then he just he has not made a movie in like 20 yeah. years. He's done some voiceover, but it, he it was so random because three years ago he came out and he's like, well, I don't, he didn't really say this. The internet said it that he had had an album coming out. Mm-hmm. It's called My Mother's Brisket and Other Love Songs. Okay. okay. <laughs> that doesn't sound That's more like a cookbook legit. than an album. Yeah, and he had made a couple albums before that, um, but it wasn't it wasn't recent, and it was just out of the blue. And I thought maybe it would be like, you know, Rick, Rick Moranis is going to come back. He's going to make a funny movie, but he didn't. And I mean, like with Ghostbusters, when it was coming up in the last couple of years, right. they mm-hmm. talked to him. But I don't know, man. Whatever he also happened. did Little Shop of Horrors. Little Shop of yeah. Horrors, man. Yeah. Yo, his catalog is Honey, I blew serious. up the kid Honey, after, yeah. the kid, after they shrunk, blew he blew him up. up. I would, yeah, I would legitimately just love to have been seeing him more over right. all these years. Like, he's he's really funny. He's really weird. There's, like, nobody really liked that guy. Right. There's a lot of people Space who are weird. Baseballs. Balls, yeah, Dark yeah. Helmet. Come on, man. Spaceballs. I don't know. Yeah, that was a classic, bro. But you John know what? Candy. I respect him for... Leaving all that to take care of his kids, man. Like, right. Yeah. Right, right. Holding it down. Ho- that's Hopefully super he was ma- still making making good money. I heard he was living here in in the city in like a nice spot. So, so then he's nice. making good money. Right. Yeah. None of us do that. That's for damn yeah. sure. <laughs> well, Rick Moranis, we yeah. miss you. We miss you, man. We're gonna watch. I gotta watch some Rick Moranis this weekend. Now. <laughs> Speaking of the weekend. And not the Star Boy. My favorite weekend. Right. Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> What are you guys going to be listening to this weekend? Because a bomb was dropped on us today. I'm I'm Danny Browning it all weekend. Oh right, yeah. I was like, what is the bomb? <laughs> yeah, the Danny Brown bomb. The Dan. Oh, that sounds really bad. Uh, <laughs> you didn't hear what I said? I'm Danny Browning it. Oh, that's even worse. Oh man, the album is really cool, really fucking weird. Yo, the album is. It's so Danny weird. Brown. It's he lives it in his own world. No, like. because the other Danny Brown albums, I wasn't. I didn't. I didn't even listen to it and feel like I'm supposed to be high right now. I'm <laughs> clearly missing something. It's that funny. I I didn't get the feel. I got the feeling of the if the la- of old was like that, especially with dip and shit. But mm-hmm. this one, it's just it's just different. But it sounds like it's shit that I feel only he could fucking rap to. Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. Because mm-hmm. at some point, like this is all over the. Oh no, it's not. Because he <laughs> brings it back. And he's right. so good at that. And he drops lines and like the, the sounds are so like out there and it's so the weird. temples are so different. I would like, love to know his process of like right. how he picks beats, how he interacts with producers, like And he's he in a different space because like he's so like for the most part he's sober. I don't know if he's like hundred yeah, percent sober, right. but I know like he stopped the lean, he stopped right, all right, the other right, hard right. shit. Um, he's just so, been being, oh, he's got some being a stuff. dad, I think, and like yeah. suburban. And he's like a Detroit. big like I be, I started following him on Instagram like a couple years ago, and like he's a nerd man. Like he plays video games a lot, big Street Fighter head. Like I right. think he plays FIFA. He Instagrams his cats all the time. He loves oh, his cats. Man. Look like, at that guy, man. He had to turn out a nerd. Like, <laughs> there's no version of Danny Brown's childhood where he's just like cool and playing yeah, sports no, and shit. You know. Oh, well, let's not forget that Danny Brown was a G, and he, you know, went to jail for slinging them things. So, had to do what he had to do. Yeah, slinging pirated copies of Diablo Two. No, and the title, Atrocity <laughs> Exhibition. That's a right. dope. That's good. Fucking title. That man. is good, man. Can we can we all agree that Danny Brown is one of the most underrated MCs right now? Hundred percent. I feel like when you talk about Kendrick and you talk about um, J. Cole, you talk about some of the new, you know, dudes that are waving the the lyrical flag, Big Crit, Mm -hmm. Danny Brown is never mentioned. Mm -hmm. It almost feels like Danny Brown reminds me of uh, um, a red man. 
Like, mm. Redman never gets the credit for being one of the dopest But he MCs. gets the credit from the people who are students of the game. Like, you will never hear right. an interview from Eminem right. where they ask him who were his who he looked five, up to right. or who his top five, and he always mentions Redman. Absolutely. I feel like with Danny, I understand why, because he's so unique. It's not right. everyone's cup of and tea. And the subject Definitely. matter, too, right? He's not talking about, you know, socially conscious stuff, which you usually yeah. associate with lyricism. He does right. sometimes, right. but he does it in such a way that it's not preachy or conscious heavy, Right. but he does make references where you're like, oh, shit. Like, Wasn't that song Wonder Bread kind of like that? That was, kinda, I, think, yeah. I think that kind of made you think a little bit. Right. Yeah. But definitely underrated. Definitely doesn't get brought up a lot. I think, I think like, every person who listens to music critically loves him. Mm-hmm. Um, but mass appeal wise, I don't know. I saw him open for Sleigh Bells a couple years ago, and that was good. Oh, I he remember was that. awesome. Yeah. Now, his also, voice is also super unique, too. That's and that's where I was about That's to like go. when that when the first thing was out, like the, what was it, Triple X or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah. That was, I listened to it. And like, everybody's like, oh, this shit is so cool. And I was like, this is not listenable to me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And then, Yo, that's how I felt about yeah. Freeway. I was like, I'm not listening to a whole album of this stuff, but mm-hmm. it turned out it but was I saw him at Bonnaroo, actually, and that was the tipping point. I, I, like, I like watched him even though I hadn't liked what I'd heard, and I was like, all right, this is great. Yeah. But see, the first song I heard of his was Monopoly. Mm-hmm. And he spit so hard on Monopoly, and mm-hmm. that beat is so weird to keep up to just because it's so fast mm-hmm. and just the sound of it. And he apps, and then the lines, man, the lines with him, he'll make punchlines and analogies that you're just like, what? But then, yeah, yeah that make, actually makes sense. Right. So that's why I like him the most because of the outrageous shit he says. That just, but it does make sense. One train that ASAP. Ooh. Fucking rap, oh. rap Avenger song that that gave him a huge bump for me. Of yes. like, yeah, all right, yeah, man, got to pay more attention here. Absolutely. So there's so much music this weekend and yeah. so much diverse music, and I'm gonna be at a festival the whole time. As well, I think uh, all three of us are gonna be at different festivals. Yeah, we year. are. Oh Wait, God, where's the festival? I'm in Queens. Mm. Where are you? Terrible. I'm gonna be in Brooklyn. Even worse. Brooklyn. I will, I got. I win. I'm gonna be in Austin, Texas. Yes. That's gonna be the best place to be. All right. So, Absolutely. Yeah. The Meadows. I'm gonna watch. Uh, I cannot wait to see Kanye, Chance, Pusha T, and I'm gonna see like Damian Marley. I'm gonna check out a Mac Miller set. Uh, the the J Cole oh. dude. Uh, Boss. Bossy. Boss. Baz. Yeah. Um. But then yeah, there's He's just dope. music like the Kid Cudi album is gonna come out. Right. It's got Andre 3000 and Pharrell twice. Oh, my God. It's got Willow Smith, Travis Scott, Mike Will, Q-Tip. And then Solange is putting out album two tomorrow with wow. uh, Lil Wayne, the dream Kelly Rowland on its own. <laughs> so, That's interesting. Yeah. And then, like, we, we, I've mentioned it, I don't know, three times, but the Bonnie Bear album, 22, a million, that's finally out. There is a Swedish metal band I love named Opeth who's out. Oh, nice. There is Regina Spector who's out. Like, it's, yeah. a, cra- it's a crazy, crazy crazy. If you're there weekend. for the whole day Saturday, check mm-hmm. out World's Fair. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was going to Queens. I, those, and yeah, I I'm going to be a ask. homer, mm-hmm. but they're all from Queens. They're no, all no. solo artists who get together and play as World Fair. And we actually, I actually interviewed them and did like a nice, I chilled with them at the studio. You can find that in Fuse.tv. While they like they were working on separate solo projects and talking about the group and how they got together, they're Santa Word. Fools Gold as nice. a group. Oh, and cool! And they're and they're dope, man. Like they each all have their own different style and they're all dope and they're all good dudes. So that's a great great name for a Queens band too. World's and they're playing Fair, and it's World's cool. Fair and they're yeah. playing in Flushy Meadows Park where right. the World Fair yeah. happens to yeah. be. Come on, yeah. it's, so, too, it's too meta, bro. Yeah, yeah. Word. I mean, well, I'm listening in to um, Danny Brown, of course, but Dave East is also dropping a project this weekend. I've been keeping an eye on him for a couple years now. One of my favorite um, newcomers to the game, Dave E.C. signed to Nas, you know, and... You know, I might be popping in some headphones between sets at yeah, the Meadows, man. man. And oh, the, and also, I wasn't here for the last two weeks, but the album by Against Me is fucking great. Word. Yeah. And, of course, Busy Crook, a part of everything comes out. I heard about six to eight records of that already. It's bananas. <sighs> Did you listen to the Isaiah Rashad record yet? No, dude, I still am definitely Damn, going to. You though. need to hit like it's. Yeah. Are we in so music good. overload right now? Is this too we, much music to digest? I know we talked about that like a few months ago yeah, too. Man. This year has been crazy. It's been a great year for music. Word. Yeah. All right. Well, that is the back of the class episode number thirty-five. Juan, you got one more thirty-five. Ooh. You got to end on one more. Damn! I had to like scrape the bottom of the pot five. with Clarence Witherspoon and Frank Thomas. Yeah, Clarence Witherspoon was <sighs> oh, terrible. Shit. 
There's no football players at 30 feet? 35, 35 is a tough number. That's like a fullback. And w- name me one famous fullback. I can't. It's tough. 35 is a toughie. All right, well. But it's not as tough as 36, 37, 38, 39. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, good luck, Juan. Yeah. We catch y'all next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.